In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the HeartMath Inner Balance to create a daily breathwork habit that'll improve your health and well-being. So the HeartMath Inner Balance uses HRV or heart rate variability to measure your stress level in the moment and provide you with real-time feedback. This feedback is helpful in habit formation as it provides instant reinforcement that you're getting better at breathwork. A bit like gamification, if you look at video games, you get experience points, and those are in the moment telling you whether you're getting better. I found when working with people who want to build a breathwork habit that they, they have all the reasons why, they just find it's hard Hard to keep doing it and turning up. The Heart Math Inner Balance really provides a great way to gamify and provide points and scoring opportunities for people when they're doing their breathwork habit. I think this changes day by day and seeing the changes isn't always obvious. What this does really well is it shows when you're getting better, when you need to have a day of doing a bit more or a bit less, how your health isn't changing. So the app really provides you with points for each session and this gamification kept me hooked. It kept me trying to reach milestones, it kept me trying to beat better scores. Even recently I was setting a, a goal for myself I do it every year on my birthday and I go how long can I do this session for today a couple of years I've done two hours three hour sessions and I try and just beat my previous point scores and get these really long mindfulness meditation breathwork sessions in it's important to create an environment that is conductive to relaxation when you're doing this so don't do it around other people or in a place you're likely to get distracted start by finding a comfortable place to sit I find if you lay it impacts the readings on the heart rate variability sensor so please sit sit up straight I like to use my hands like this so I like to keep them touching each other, thumbs together. I found this out through karma binding meditation. I found it a really useful way to keep me engaged. And when I start to switch off, my thumbs separate and I, I know that I'm not engaged with it. I've been reading the book Oxygen Advantage by uh, Patrick McEwen, and I'm experimenting with different breaths types. Feel out what works for you. I find a repeated six by six or eight by eight breaths really beneficial. I know that he says in the book, four seconds in, six seconds out. I believe this is so that you're getting additional heart rate variability changes through the parasympathetic nervous system, but I found I I still got the same benefits over time if I did 6688. Eight, eight. Your mileage may vary, find what works for you. You cannot set a default for this setting for a four and a six. You have to do a six and six or an eight and eight in the app. Sometimes use Elite HRV at the same time because it has custom breathing options. An important step for most people is to find a focal object. So this is the one thing that you're focusing on throughout your breath work session or your mindfulness practice. I think focusing on the breath is available to everyone and most people can do that. And I find I myself return to it, especially during a difficult session. But if you want to start building practice, things like gratitude, loving kindness, create an opportunity for challenge. There's an opportunity for more thoughts and things to pull you away. So you might want to try these, but come back to the breath if you get stuck. Early on, I'd find that I used to beat myself up and I noticed that I would drop out of coherent state on the app. And this is likely because I was pulling myself too hardly back. So I'd notice I'm getting distracted and I'd pull myself back and I would find I was doing this too like jarring. For anyone that's trying it and is new, I'd say just be gentle. So notice, gently come back. Notice, gently come back. You have to experience this to really feel what it's like. For me, that was something I noticed I did a lot. Gratitude is a focal object. I think this is probably the end point. Most people get most bang for their buck doing gratitude practice during the meditation sessions. The trick with using gratitude though is to find something you're grateful for before you start. Don't go searching once you're into a session, otherwise you end up in a thought loop or a thought pattern where you're thinking through why I'm grateful and not having a focal point or focal object. The way I like to do this, once I've got the thing, I've got, I'm feeling grateful, I notice the emotion and I think of it like an ember in a flame. I breathe in through it and I breathe in like I'm trying to blow a fire and trying to build this fire and little embers are getting blown and then as I breathe out again, ignites that flame. I find this visualization helpful, helps me to feel like I'm pushing the emotion, creating a larger emotion and it's around my heart, which I think is a good way to breathe. I check in occasionally on the HRV, on the coherence score on the, on the screen. A warning is that you can get really stuck on trying to move it and if your thoughts are on moving it and comparing and all that sort of stuff, you've lost your focal object and you're out. Coherence will then drop. It's a balancing act between finding a time to check it and making sure you're on the right track and not getting stuck thinking and managing it as you go. I then move my focal object and refocus if I'm not focusing and I come back to it. Maybe set minute goals. Just to recap, what I like to do is I like to find a space that's conducive to doing this work. Calm area, away from everyone. I like to start with focus on my breath, but if I'm going to do gratitude, I'll remember to start that beforehand, find a focal object of gratitude. Once I'm into that sensation, I breathe into it. And I like to use it like a fire, breathing into embers, and then I like to break it down into minute sections and check in on my coherence score. And if it's going up and I maintain what I'm doing, if it's going down or I'm hooked, I scan for what might have hooked me and I keep going and doing what I'm doing.